Now, probably one of the questions you're asking yourself, I've certainly been asking myself a lot as well, is where do all of these emissions, people are talking about carbon emissions, talking about getting down to net zero, but where do they actually come from? And is there a, you know, a way of comparing the emissions that we are creating, for instance, in our homes with other stuff uh, coming from the industrial sector? Well, actually, if you dig down into the data, you can do it. And so this is going to be a slightly longer sequence than we normally do, but it's really good to just to understand what this data is representing and how to compare pair emissions from one sector with another sector because you know actually when you look at a lot of the focus that we have in our news shows uh, and indeed in newspapers a lot of it goes on things that actually uh, don't produce that much emissions compared with other things that we don't really talk about that much so for instance okay this um, donut here, but I guess it's a donut, uh, represents total global emissions. It's for a few years ago, but it's still more or less representative of where we are now. It's about 50 gigatons, billions of ton uh, tons of carbon dioxide or its equivalent, so other greenhouse gases as well. And if we just start to break it down, let's have a look, for instance, at land use. You can see that over there. It's, it's the second biggest chunk after energy, and we'll get to energy in a second, by far the way, uh, the biggest. But what we can do is break that down and see where the emissions are coming from within land use. So have a look at that. That now represents all all of land use and you've got various different bits of this so for instance look livestock manure you can see those cows over there uh, that's 6.8 percent by far and away the biggest chunk of it is uh emissions coming from cattle from other livestock as well but just look above that so above the 5.8 percent 1.3 percent for rice so specifically for rice farming that's partly because of methane that's created during the process of paddy fields uh, essentially being submerged and then you have methane coming from the bacteria 1.3 percent uh, of total emissions in the world are down to rice. Really striking, isn't it? And you know, the question is what can be done about that? Then you've got soils, crop burning, uh, deforestation, and we'll get to an interesting comparison about that as well. A lot of talk about deforestation. You're talking about 2.2% uh, of total uh, global emissions, then cropland and grassland as well. Let's put that back and start comparing it with other things. So for instance, you can see with waste, uh, we're talking about waste here, talking about landfill, we're talking about wastewater, emissions coming out from there, uh, various different greenhouse gases uh, we're talking about um, there. And now we're starting to look at chemical processes. And it's worth just saying, what we've got here are the di direct emissions that are caused from various processes. So for instance, the creation of cement, that involves uh, burning it in a kiln and you've got a chemical reaction between limestone uh, that uh, essentially kind of gets, gets rid of the carbon and that goes off as carbon dioxide. So a lot of carbon dioxide coming out from the, the chemical process of cement, but you've also got energy costs as well. We'll come on to a second, but a lot of uh, emissions. So chemicals and petrol, you're talking about 2.2%. Chemical, you're talking, uh, sorry, cement, you're talking about 3%. It all starts to add up. And really nothing can compare with this though, can it? So let's take energy and have a look at where those energy emissions are actually coming from. So for instance, about 16% of all of the energy that we're using in the, in the world, which is creating carbon emissions, is transports. The obvious thing, of course, is roads. So road travel, uh, almost 12%. Then air, 1.9%. Uh, and shipping, 1.7%. So a lot of this is transport. 16% of our emissions is down to kind of getting around, uh, around the world. And then you've got buildings. So emissions that are coming out of, for instance, our homes, that's about 11% of the total. Uh, and then commercial premises. So, uh, and I should say, we're talking here about electricity going into office blocks. We're talking about heating uh, and indeed air conditioning for these office blocks and for homes as well. That's about 17.5% of total global emissions. Remember, that 50 billion or so uh, of carbon dioxide emissions that we're talking about here. Then, bigger than either of those two things, and this is really the interesting thing here, bigger than any of that is industrial energy. So that is bigger than any of the buildings that we work in, that we live in. It's industrial work. So stuff like iron and steel, blast furnaces, 7.2% percent of global emissions comes down to iron and steel. You've got chemical industry, and we, we had the chemical industry a moment ago, didn't we, when we were looking at the chemical process. But now consider this, that's the energy that goes into the process when you're kind of actually start setting up a plant for a chemical reaction, 3.6%. Other bits like agriculture and fishing, uh, there's an energy cost as well. So we had that kind of light blue area, about 18%. That's just uh, emissions that are coming directly from the land and from livestock and so on. This is the energy cost of actually running an agriculture business across the world. And then you've got fuel combustion and oil and gas and top that up and you're talking about, well, by far and away, the biggest chunk of world emissions are coming from energy, energetic processes around the world that we all rely on. Uh, and a lot of questions about you know, what we do about that. But it is just worth taking a step back here because probably you've seen some of those numbers and wondered, well, actually that looks a little bit smaller than I expected compared 
to this. You know, so for instance, you know, we talk quite a lot about aviation, certainly. You know, we need to fly less, we need to try and conserve uh, some of those aviation emissions, offset them if you can. That's about 1.9% of total global emissions. And actually, if you remember, that's a little bit lower than cement. So we talk a lot about aviation, don't we? We don't really talk that much about cement, and I wonder whether we should be doing a bit more discussion uh, about that. Or same thing, by the way, for deforestation. So cement, you're talking about 3%. Uh, have a look at deforestation. That's 2.2% for deforestation. So it just goes to show, you know, what do we talk about more? Do we talk about deforestation more or the production of cement? Probably deforestation, and there's obvious reasons for that. It's very kind of telegenic, very photogenic, but really we need to work out a way of making cement in a sustainable way. And right now we're still very, very much at the kind of early stages uh, of working that out. Similar thing, if I kind of turn the donut around and we can just focus on energy in particular, have a look at this. So residential, now this is obviously something that affects all of us. In fact, you know, that 10.9% of emissions is coming from all of our homes, you know, billions of people across the planet, whether it's electricity, whether it's heating and so on, 10.9%. Well, what's that equivalent to? It's actually equivalent to a few thousand steel and chemical plants. So it just goes to show you've got a lot of people affected by this, whereas this is fewer plants. Incredibly important for the global economy, uh, but you're talking about equal emissions. And do we focus more on that, the residential side, or do we focus more on steel and chemical? Well, we probably need to think a little bit more about how we can have green steel. If we're gonna try and get to net zero, you've got to think about how you deal with this, green steel, how you deal with green chemical processes, because we're nowhere near actually working that out and certainly getting that into the mainstream. Uh, and then, you know, I suppose the, there is a kind of overarching question about why this matters uh, for places like the UK, or indeed the US, where that kind of breakdown, if you look at it specifically in the UK, and this is global, the breakdown in the UK won't be as dominated by industrial processes. So you might think, okay, it's good news in the UK, we're getting our emissions down, isn't that great? And certainly, yes, when you look at overall levels of em uh, emissions, this is just carbon dioxide emissions in the UK, they are coming down, so it starts in 1990, down by about 35% as of a few years ago. They've come down since then, but these are kind of par comparable numbers we're looking at. It just came out, actually, this week. Um, but here's the thing. That goes down to net zero, so that's the target everyone's aiming for. But these emissions are essentially all the emissions that are happening in the UK, so domestic generation of carbon dioxide emissions and other greenhouse gases. But we also import stuff from overseas, don't we? What about that stuff that you get from China? What about the stuff you get from Europe? What about steel that we import uh, from the continent? What about cement that we import? What about all those other industrial processes, which I just showed you there, which we don't do much of in the UK? Well, we can still work out how much of that stuff we are importing and consuming. And if you do that, the total footprint, so not just looking at domestic stuff, but looking at stuff we consume, is a lot higher. So that is our all of the emissions we're basically responsible for. So below the, the white line is in this country, and between those two lines, that's emissions from imported goods around the world. And you can see the line, first of all, is a lot higher. Second of all, it hasn't fallen as fast as that white line, which is the white line basically that net zero is all about. And if we want to get down to net zero on that, well, it's going to be a lot harder because you have to try and you know, cooperate with other countries. You have to try and persuade them to cut emissions, which we're not necessarily able to do. So you can see this is the more you look at it, the more complicated it gets but we need to focus on this kind of data, whether it's looking at total domestic emissions and just remembering that there's also imported goods, or whether it's looking at where those emissions are coming from. It's a really powerful thing to remember it's not just about deforestation, it's not just about aviation, it's not just about those things you do in your home, it's also about cement, it's about steel, it's about obscure processes which we really need to focus on and try to remake. If you're gonna get down to net zero, you need to remake them and reimagine the industrial revolution all over again.